the oldest thing in this fridge are some uh, Taco Bell sauce packets, which I totally identify with. Um, the person, he said, you know, who would you call if you need to get bailed out of jail? He said, depends on what I did. <laughs> and finally, uh, the most physically scary he ever was, was in the parking lot of a CVS. Uh, he got into a physical altercation with someone who was asking him for money, which he didn't have and didn't want to give. And he just, uh, it was like four or five seconds, but he told the guy and, and handled it very, very well. So again, bridging the gap between parallel belief and skeptics, please welcome Kenny Biddle. Yay, Kenny! Um, I apologize if I'm nervous. This is the first time I'm on a big stage with all of you fine folks, but I'm going to try to do the best I can. So, I am officially CFI's new chief investigator. For Woo! I know what you're doing! The future! I can do what I love full time. I found someone to pay me to do it. This is great. <laughs> so, I'm going to talk about today, instead of talking about solving mysteries, I'm going to talk about bridging the gap between some, some, paranormal believers and skeptics. But first, I want to do a quick survey. So, I'm going to answer you a couple questions, and if you have participated in any of the events that I, I'm going to ask you, I want you to give me a big clap when I say clap now. Okay, everyone got that? Good. So, how many of you have attended SciCon in previous years? Or at TAM? Yay! We failed. That's good, it's that's good. I like time. that. How many of you have attended a ghost hunting conference? All right, I'm glad we have a front row here. That's great. All right, last question. How about a UFO or Bigfoot conference? Maybe a psychic fair? That was a long All right, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, but working together, I think, in my opinion, is better than working against, always fighting each other. Um, I'm, we're going to do that. We're going to do that anyway. Works there. But I like working together. So, um, let's see. Many years ago, I was a ghost hunter. So the top picture that you see there, that's me. Um, in full stereotype uh, ghost hunting gear, all black. Um, I had my photographer's vest, which did not have any photography gear in it. It had ghost hunting gear. And you can see some of the stuff that's um, on the floor there. I have a temperature gun. I have an EMF meter. A whole bunch of ghost hunting gadgets. Total believer. I was really into it. I would not work with any skeptics because I thought skeptics and scientists, they were afraid of what we knew. And I didn't know any of them. I really didn't know anything. But I still thought they just didn't, they didn't want to talk to us. They didn't, they were afraid of us. So after an experience that I had, which you can ask me later, um, but I, I was mistaken as a ghost. I was at a ghost hunting conference and during the course of that weekend, I was mistaken as a ghost. And no matter what I did, I could not convince the ghost hunters that saw me, that thought I was a ghost, that I was not a ghost. <laughs> yeah, go figure, right? Um, so after that, I kind of changed my ways. I started going over to the skeptical side. But in the, in the beginning, I was angry. I was angry because now I was mad at all the people that believed everything without any evidence, just like I did. I was angry at them, so I was always looking to start a fight. Always. It took me a long time to figure out that it's better to work together than to work uh, you know, apart, fighting each other, going against each other. And a bunch of skeptics there, Susan Gerbic, Nickel, Nick West. Uh, so why bother working together? If you can build a relationship with people with different beliefs, that you can build that trust. You can have an impact on how they think. You can influence what they're thinking, how they think. That's the most important thing, right? We always hear, it's more important to learn how to think than what to think. So building this trust will have this impact. Um, you don't want people that just listen to the choir or preaching to the choir. You want to be able to have that opposing view. Working together also opens opportunities for people that are like a friend of a friend. Most often when I deal with people or interact with people, that's probably a polite way to say it. When I interact with people that have different viewpoints, and we talk, and I help them. I help them figure out a photographic anomaly or a video they can't figure out because they think it's a ghost. They get impressed, and they will tell their friends, and their friends will then contact me and ask me for help. And I think that has a big impact. That has an influence on them, on getting through to them. And finally, people just standing by. How many conversations have you had 
over the last two days where there's other people standing by listening. You can affect them, you can have an influence on those people and they will come back to you later on after the conference. Maybe at dinner you'll see them. You'll see them in the food court downstairs in the casino. They'll come up and talk to you. So it's always good to work together. And because of this, I came up with my wacky wheel of working together. These are several uh, puzzle pieces that we're gonna go through. And for me, they help. They don't always work. Obviously, you can't get through to everyone. But they tend to work for me. And they build relationship, they build trust. So let's get through them. Being nice, or the Patrick Swayze rule, which is the shirt I'm wearing. Be nice until it's time not to be nice. This is your overall theme. This is what you really should strive to do. I, I don't like being mean. I don't want to be that mean skeptic that tries to start a fight with everyone. I want to be nice and get along with people. Um, you have to remember that these are, when people have these beliefs, most of the time they're lifelong. They, they've known this since birth. I was raised Catholic. Yeah, I know, it's, it's, it's a shame, but I was raised Catholic and from birth, that's all I knew until I went, got to high school. And then I started realizing there were other religions. I didn't even know there were other religions until I got to high school. So you have to remember that these beliefs are core beliefs. You have to be nice about it. Don't just be confrontational, be nice. Um, in my experience, skeptical, skeptics are often viewed as the enemy. You know, we're the people that, for fun, we like just busting beliefs. That's the reputation that we get. That's what I get from beliefs. And I don't want to be like that. I don't, I want to be remembered for educating. I want to be remembered for, hey, that guy taught me something new about photography or video. He taught me how to investigate better. That's how I want to be remembered. And I hope you guys want to be remembered like that too. Likewise on TV shows, how often are we portrayed as skeptics? And how, we're portrayed as the naysayers, the know-it-alls. You know, we get 30 seconds in an hour-long program about paranormal topics. We get 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and then half the time, that's taken out of context. We are edited out of context to make it look like we like, oh, you know, maybe it might happen. When we actually say, no, it's not gonna happen. That's the fault of production companies. But we should still try to show people in person, we're not like that. We're nice, we're knowledgeable, and we wanna help. The next step is be patient, wait your turn. Uh, how, how often do you see people that listen only to interrupt? You have a conversation and they're, real, they're like, uh, 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 and they wanna interrupt you right away. And once they see that opening, they take over, they talk over you. I hate that, I really hate that. I give them three tries. They interrupt me three times, I walk away. That's it, end of conversation, game over. Um, but for either the believer or the skeptic, this behavior sucks. I just don't like it. I don't think it's professional. I think you should listen to them. Uh, and it shows that if you're cutting them off, you're not paying attention to what they're saying. You're not paying attention to them. Let them finish, wait your turn. Another thing is we all get annoyed. We all get annoyed. How many times have you been asked the same question over and over again? Susan, how many times have you been asked about your psychic stings? Stings over and over and over again. To you, you've heard it thousands of times. That, that person that came up to you, this was the first time they're asking you. And they're taking a chance. Maybe they're afraid of what you're gonna say. Don't know, but remember, just be patient with them. You know, this is their first time. My Bill Nye story, I mean, obviously, this is not a story about believer versus skeptic, because Bill Nye. Um, but a few years ago, at Saigon, Bill Nye showed up. He wasn't scheduled to be here, but he showed up. And I was excited. I heard he was coming. And I was like, I grew up watching Bill Nye. I'm so excited. This is going to be so great. I can't wait. I'm going to get my picture with him. I'm going to get a selfie. Woohoo! He showed up. He was real busy. Didn't get to talk to him the first day. The next morning, my wife and I are downstairs before the conference starts. Here comes Bill Nye. Goes right to the coffee station. I'm like, this is my chance. I'm going to go over. I'm going to get my picture with him before anyone else bothers him. This is going to be great. My wife is going, look at him. He's tired. He's very tired, he's barely moving. Don't bother him. I'm like, all right, you're right, you're right. Nope, you're wrong, I'm going. <laughs> so I go. <laughs> go over there, and I'm like, hey, Mr. Bill and I, it's a science guy, how you doing? Um, I'm, I'm a big fan, I love your work. Do you mind if I get a picture? And I mean, he's literally at the coffee machine, just starting before the coffee. And he stops, and he goes, okay. 
turns and takes a picture with me. And I mean, the picture says it all. I mean, it's a beautiful picture. Look, look how excited he is. Beautiful. But even though, I mean, look at his coffee cup. It's barely, he can barely put any in it. I was excited, and I will remember this forever. This, he took the time out of his day, even though he was tired. He was patient with me, so I respect that. <laughs> he was so nice. So the next step is listen and understand. Really listen to them. I mean, if they're coming up to you with a ghost story, alien abduction story, or they saw Bigfoot in the woods, they're choosing to come up to you. So give them, give them time. Let them explain it. Listen to what they're saying. Listen to the words, the description that they're using. And if that decision to come to you was a challenge, like, hey, Mr. Skeptic, you know, explain this. Well, explain it, because that's what we do. But they might be coming to you for advice. So listen to them. Because the more you listen, the more you understand, the better advice you can give them. And again, remember, this is like a lifetime of belief they might have. They might have a, a lack of understanding. They just don't understand what's going on or what they saw. You can help them by being nice, being patient, and listening. Uh, listening to someone else's perspective is also a better way to gain an understanding of where they're coming from. Like, and, and that helps you develop a good approach to having a conversation with them. You, you know where they're coming from, you know what you can say, what you might not be able to say, or what you shouldn't say, because you don't want to piss them off. Um, but you want to be nice about it and have a conversation. So definitely listen and understand where they're coming from. Participate and understand, or participate and attend. This is my favorite part, I love this. So when I asked about the, the questions, the survey in the beginning, I always go to paranormal conferences. I go to more paranormal themed conferences than I do science conferences. And when I go, I, I like to get that perspective because you can ask them questions. They set up booths. You can go there and ask them questions about what they do, how they do it, why they do it. If they have little gadgets on the table, you can play with them. They let you play with it, and I love it because they're all blinky lights and they make noises and stuff. <laughs> Sometimes they run around the table. So I love playing with that stuff. It also shows that you don't shy away from trying, trying it their way. Because that's the number one complaint that I get, that, oh, you're just a skeptic. You don't do it, you're not even gonna try it the way I do it. And, and they're surprised when I say, yes, I do, let's go. You know, if you wanna hunt for demons or if you wanna go find Bigfoot in the woods and you think uh, banging a stick against the tree is gonna call Bigfoot, oh, oh, all right, I'll try it. You know, why not? I, I have nothing to do tonight. So when you do try it, you're showing that you're willing. So that later on when they're like, oh, what you think? You can give an honest opinion because you did try it their way. Participation also builds trust. Um, when you show up at these events, like I show up over and over and over again to the point where I'm invited. I get invited back to set up and to speak at these events to talk about my skepticism and critical thinking. And I mean, for a paranormal conference, that's, I don't, I don't hear about that. I don't know any other skeptics that are invited to these events and allowed to speak, allowed to roam freely and cause trouble because that's what I do. <laughs> so this is me at paranormal conferences. Anybody recognize where this is from? Snoopy. Snoopy. Yeah, from peanuts. This is non-confrontational. I'm not starting a fight. I'm not in your face. People see this. They walk by. Most of the time, they smile. Because they're like, oh, look at that. That's so cool. And then they come over. And once they come over, then I hit them with all this information. Bam! Hit them. Logical fallacies. Scientific method. Uh, how to investigate uh, through science. Um, all kinds of stuff like that. And it's a conversation. It's not confrontational. It doesn't start a fight. They like it. They enjoy it. Another step I do when I participate, that's me in a dunk tank. <laughs> um, so that's at a ghost hunting conference that I'm wearing a shirt. You can't see it, but it's a bright shirt and it has a big circle. It says psychics, Reiki, uh, demons, ghosts, uh, Bigfoot, all that. And across, the, the, across <laughs> all of it, it says fake. So I'm in a ghost hunting conference with a fake t-shirt like that. And I have to brag because two years in a row, I've raised the most money for the charities. <laughs> yes, Kids with Cancer and Pennsylvania Wounded Warriors. So I've raised money for them. And it, you can say whatever you want. 
anything because when you're, you're in a dunk tank, it's like free rate. You get a license to say whatever you want. People come up, they buy their three balls to throw at me, and I'm like, hey, you had a sign saying you were psychic, don't you? Wouldn't you know if you're going to hit the target? <laughs> so that really that makes them mad, and they all miss. <laughs> so, so much fun. But I'm not the only one that does this. Uh, there's a bunch of other people. Jim Underdown, he, uh, his group got together with some flat earthers, and they tried to do some experiments. I mean, it worked out for us, but it didn't work out for them. But at least he tried. And I love seeing that. This is uh, Ross and Carrie. And if you don't know, if you haven't heard of Oh No, Ross and Carrie, you need to. Because their entire podcast is based on trying, participating, attending, attending, and getting into it. I love it. I love it. They're here testing a, it's one of them like gravity houses. <clears throat> We're supposed to be gravity is all messed up. Ben Rafford, um, he's out with uh, Josh Gates and exploring the Chupacabra. Um, but he comes out there and he participates like that. Mick West Yay. is talking to the, this is the billionaire that owns Scott, uh, Skinwalker Ranch, uh. where all the you know, alleged UFOs, that's bullshit, don't worry about it. But he's talking with him, he's having a conversation with him, a peaceful conversation, and he's participating, which I love. So hopefully after this kind of talk, maybe you guys will start attending and getting a better understanding. So the last step, Discuss and inform. This is your chance. This is your chance to put information in, inject some knowledge, get it in there. Um, understand that this may take five minutes. All these puzzle pieces may take about five minutes, or it may take months or years. It's been years sometimes when I interact with people and they finally come around. You get a breakthrough, which is really great. And by breakthrough, I mean you break through that anti skeptic wall. You gain their trust, their respect. They come to you for advice. They say, hey, I got this weird picture. I don't know what it is. What do you think it is? I tell them, they accept it. They don't reject it. They don't reject me. They don't curse me out, which does still happen. But they listen to me, which is great. Let's see, what do we got here? Uh, this is the time to bring up your facts, your figure. Hit them with all the knowledge you've got because they will listen to you. They will, will absorb it. They might not take it all, but they'll take some. And then maybe the next time they take a little bit more. And the next time they take a little bit more. And you get through it to them. So be nice, listen, understand, be patient, and then discuss. It's great, it all comes together. And you keep it conversational, not confrontational. Don't go in looking for a fight. I did that, my transition to skepticism, in the beginning I was looking for a fight all the time. Doesn't work. You get angry, they get angry, no one gets anywhere. So keep it conversational. And when all the pieces fit together, usually this results in some good feedback. You pass along that information, that, that, that knowledge of critical thinking. You impress upon them what to look for. Look for details. Do this. Don't assume. Consult others. All of this information comes together. And this has helped me over the years. So the gentleman up in the corner here, the top left corner, that's Jason Halls from the TV show Ghost Hunters. He's a good friend of mine, been a good friend of mine for years. He calls me while they're filming and says, hey, somebody suggested we do this or use this piece, piece of equipment, should I? And I tell him, no, it's a waste of time, don't do it. And he doesn't. So a lot of stuff that you might think you'll see on TV or on his show and you don't, you're welcome. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one, top right, is Josh Bender. He makes ghost hunting gadgets, but he calls me and, and looks for advice. What do you think of this? Can I do this? What kind of experiment would you do? And he builds equipment, and before he even tries to sell it, I mean, he still sells it, but before he tries to sell it, he sends me one. So, like, that's a battery tester that you see in that picture. Um, it tests battery drain over a long period of time. And he sent me one. He gave me one so I could test it and give him feedback. And that's because we have this trust between us. Um, the bottom left, two psychic mediums, which know that I don't believe that they are psychic or medium. And they still talk to me, which is nice. Um, they won't give me a reading, but they still talk to me. And then the last guy is uh, Eric Altman. He's a Bigfoot hunter. And he's taken me out on Bigfoot hunts. We never found Bigfoot. But he still takes me out um, in places where he thinks I might see them. 
Uh, but we get along. He keeps calling me over and over again to come out with him. And he runs stuff by me, which is nice because we built that relationship. So the sum. So in the beginning, my, my talk is called, you know, bridging the gap between some paranormal believers. There's always going to be some people that you can't reach. So there's going to be people, people that know what they know, and they also think they know better than the experts. Always going to be people like that. You're, you're probably not going to reach them. Try. Try anyway. Be nice. Go through the steps. Be nice anyway. Can't hurt. There's always going to be people that are heavily invested. Time, money, reputation. The, I mean, I know ghost hunters that have spent thousands and thousands of dollars, like tens of thousands of dollars on equipment that doesn't do shit, doesn't do anything. But they still spend it because they saw it on TV. And when we go through it, they realize it doesn't work. But they're so invested, they can't give it up. I think uh, if you've ever seen Behind the Curve, yeah. uh, Mark Sargent actually has a scene where they ask him about it. And if he could, if he's proven wrong, could he give it up? And he, I don't know exactly what he said, but he basically says, I'm too invested, I can't do it. His reputation, so that's a good example. But again, you're likely not gonna reach them. There will always be people that value anecdotes over evidence-based information, especially if it's their own story. If it happened to them, it must be true, right? How many times have you heard that? And then you have to give them more information. It takes a lot of time. You're probably not gonna reach them, but keep trying, because sometimes you do have a, a breakthrough. And then lastly, you will always, always have a-holes. <laughs> they, they fall into all three categories. They just follow, they hate you because you're a skeptic. As soon as you say, oh, I'm a bit skeptical, or I work for a skeptical organization, they hate you. I get that a lot. It's okay, I don't care. They can hate me. So what about when it is time to not be nice? You don't have to be, you don't have to get into fist fights. Don't worry. Um, although I, there's been a, a few a few instances where I have almost got there. Um, but basically, the best thing to do is walk away. If it gets heated, walk away. Don't give them your time. Don't give them your energy. And I mean, as a side note, a little elbow nudge. It really, really makes them mad when you just walk away. When you calmly walk away, you're like, eh, that's okay. I'm not. I'm done. That. Oh my God. They get red faced and they start screaming at you. It's great. Uh, the second thing you do, you can debate. Just don't get emotional. Don't get pissed off. You know, stay calm. Because this also annoys them. Because have you ever noticed that? The person that stays calm, the other person gets louder and louder and louder. I love that. <laughs> it, it makes me laugh inside. Uh, but keep going. Or if you have the means, you write about it. You create a video about it. You include them in a presentation for Psycom. And you talk about them. You're like, hey, you know, I can talk about this. Um, like Susan with the, her psychic stings. Great, you talk about them. Um, but that's about it. I don't like doing too much confrontation. I like keeping it peaceful, um, nice and easy, being friendly, being nice. And that's the whole point of this, because you want to build trust. You want to build a relationship rather than keep fighting. And with that, I am done. I hope you yeah. Thank you, Bill, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. A practical approach. I love it.